everyone and welcome back to another physics lesson. Today we'll be learning about analog versus digital signals. But before we get to that, I believe it is time for the most important question of the video, which is who's excited for physics? <laughs> so glad to have you here with me today. Let's get into it. Here are the questions you should be able to answer by the end of the video. The first question is, what is a signal? The second one is, what are analog and digital signals? And the third one is, what are some everyday examples of analog and digital signals? Let's start with question number one, what is a signal? Generally speaking, a signal is a quantity that can represent and convey information. Typically, signals are passed between devices to send and receive information. Here are some examples of ways signals can travel. One example is fiber optics. Fiber optics cables are commonly known for carrying signals to your TV. And the way that fiber optics works is by sending information coded in a beam of light down a glass or plastic pipe. Another example is the radio. Radios receive signals via radio waves. Finally, we have the telephone. The signals that are sent and received by phones are voltage signals. We'll talk more about phones and radios in the future slides. There are two types of signals. There are analog signals and there are digital signals. Even from this image, you can visually see the difference between these two signals. Analog signals are represented by a continuous wave, while digital signals are represented by discrete columns. But what does that mean and how do they work? Let's go ahead and get into more specific details about each type of signal. We'll start with analog signals. An analog signal converts information into waves of varying amplitude and frequency. As we can see in this graph, the signals are smooth and continuously changing. When something is described as continuous, that means that there are infinite values they can take, even if those values are in between a certain range. Let's say that the range is this top point and this bottom point. The analog signal can have a value that falls anywhere between those two points, infinite amount of values. And because these signals are continuously changing, they can record the exact waveform that was delivered and then received by a device. On the other hand, we have a digital signal that converts information into discrete values. They have a finite set of possible values that the signal can be converted into. In other words, digital signals exist as on or off pulses. On pulses are often represented as a number one, and off pulses are often represented by the number zero. This is something known as binary. Bi meaning two, which refers to the two values that the signal can exist as, one or zero. In a square wave, these values are either up or down. Up means on and down means off. As you can see over here, up is one, down is zero, up is on, down is off. Because these values are clear cut, they are less prone to interference and more replicable than analog waves, as they do not need to replicate every single part of the wave perfectly. They just need to know if a signal is on or off. The last point is that square waves are made by sampling along the waveform, but what does that mean? Let's use the example of music. As we know, the product of digital signals are not always just on or off. They're more complex than that. When you listen to an MP3 song, there are different sounds and volumes. It's not that there is or is not sound. So how does this happen? How do we get a song recording that becomes an MP3? We start with a singer in a recording studio and the sounds coming out of the singer's mouth are in analog waveforms. Then what happens to those analog sound waves is a sampling of those analog waveforms by an analog to digital converter, that's what ADC stands for. This is done to convert the analog sound waves into digital bits. As with any sampling, the more samples you get in a certain amount of time, the more data points you have to make your digital bits, and therefore the higher quality your song will be. That's why people like to download songs with higher kilobits per second or KBPS, because that means more kilobits are being processed and therefore transferred per second, giving you a higher quality sound. Once you've finished sampling the analog waveform with this converter, you have successfully stored this analog signal into a digital signal in the form of MP3. And then from there, you can listen to your song. Now let's go through some everyday examples of analog and digital signals. Let's start with the example of telling time. I want you to pause this video and think of what an analog signal for telling time would be versus a digital signal. So analog clocks have arms that are continuously changing position, smoothly moving all around the circle. There are an infinite amount of values that the clock arm can have as it moves around the circle. On the other hand, digital clocks are like this one. They change by discrete values either minute by minute, like the one in this picture, or sometimes you have second by second. 
there's not an infinite amount of values that the clock can showcase to you. Let's talk more about phones now, like as we mentioned earlier. Take a moment and think of what an analog telephone would look like versus a digital one. So the analog version of a telephone would be a landline. When we speak into a landline telephone, a wire cable carries a sound from our voice into a socket into the wall, where another cable takes it to the local telephone exchange, where your voice waves are then sent to the telephone of the individual you are speaking to. The digital version of a telephone would be a cell phone. Cell phones work by converting your voice into discrete digital signals that are then sent via radio waves to the receiving cell phone. One thing I do want you to note is that even though our analog voice is converted into digital signals, those digital signals are then converted back to analog signals before the listener receives them. The reason for that is that we cannot process digital signals, we can only process analog signals. Therefore, just like there are analog to digital converters, there are digital to analog converters that switch from digital signals to analog signals so that we can process them. What about listening to music? What is the analog version of listening to music versus the digital version? So the analog version would be listening to a vinyl record player. There are actual grooves in the vinyl that make sound waves as the needle passes through them that are then amplified into the sound that you hear. The digital version would be songs stored as MP3s like we mentioned before. Analog signals in the recording were converted to digital signals that are stored as an MP3 track. And in your phone or speaker system, those digital signals are converted to analog signals that we can hear and understand. Another example is analog and digital versions of listening to a talk show. The analog version would be listening to the talk show on a radio where the radio is receiving radio waves. The digital version would be listening to a recorded podcast that is converting analog waves from the podcaster's voice to digital signals, similar to the MP3 recording of a song. Finally, let's talk about TV shows. What do you think the analog version of TV is, and how about the digital version? Well, the analog version would be something like this TV. It works with the antenna, and the antenna receives signals that are waves with rapid variations of either the amplitude, frequency, or phase of the signal, and these variations will then represent the brightness, colors, and sound of the image that you'll see on your TV. So it's actually receiving waves in their exact waveform. The digital version of TV would be Netflix. The light and sound waves are first converted to digital signals that are then transferred to your device for streaming. Great, so now that we've learned about signals, the different types of signals, and have gone over five examples of analog versus digital signals, it is time for you to dive deeper and conduct some research so you can evaluate which type of signal is a more reliable way to encode and transmit information. Here are the questions that you can research to make your own conclusion on the issue. First question is, what happens to the quality and strength of the signal over time? Second one, how is the information copied and deleted? Third one, how is the information transferred or shared from one person to the next? Fourth, how can the signal be protected and kept private? Five, what makes the signal accessible and inaccessible to many people? And six, how much storage space is required for each type of signal? Thank you so much for tuning into this video. I hope you learned something new and always remember, this is fine and I can do it. I'll see you in the next video.